I heard it through a brother that you, oh my brother, you are going through times of difficulty. I know sometimes you feel all alone. Call me anytime when you feel all the way down. Oh, 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 oh. Trials and temptations lie at every corner we turn. It's a test from Allah to see if we succeed or not. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. In the name of Allah, the compassion and the merciful, all praise is due to Allah. And may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon his prophet Muhammad, his family and his followers all until the day of reckoning and resurrection. Please, I'm very happy to be here with you on Huda TV. In fact, this is the first live television broadcasting for any program live from Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. So... We are very happy that we are with you tonight and inshallah, by the grace of Allah, every Friday evening at 9 p.m. Mecca time, um, 6 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time. And I uh, welcome you to this new program. And the idea comes from the advice because every one of us needs advice in his or her life because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes advices and he in fact gave us the best of advices in the glorious Quran as he subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَلَقَدْ وَصَّيْنَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ وَإِيَّاكُمْ أَنِ اتَّقُوا اللَّهِ Verily we have given the advice for you and those before you that you fear and have piety of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's why we're with you this evening, inshallah, we'll continue until 10 p.m. Mecca time. And our lines are open for you. In fact, we do have also a uh, uh, email service for you. And this is the name of this program, uh, meetyouradvisor at gmail.com. So we are very happy that we are together this evening by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this new program. And obviously we need the advice as I said and we, uh, we know of the great hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam which was reported by Tamim al-Dari, may Allah be pleased with him, as he said, uh, ad deen al nasiha Deen or religion is advice. And we said, that is Tamim al-Dari who reported this, when he said, Liman ya Rasulullah, for him, for whom, O Messenger of Allah. And he said, for Allah, for his book, for his messenger, and for the Imams of Muslims and the public of Muslims, meaning those who are in authority. لِأَئِمَّةِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ وَعَامَّتِهِمْ This is a great hadith, which really encompasses all of what we need regarding advice. الدِّينُ النَّصِيحَ Religion is but an advice. That's why advice is so significant and important in everyday life. Because we do things the way we think is right. And that's why we always need someone to be with us. We need someone to give us the advice. In fact, we get the advice of our bosses in our works. We get the advices of our teachers and professors and sheikhs. We give, get the advisors of our parents. We get the, advice, the advices of our peers and, and friends. We give the advices of professionals regarding certain points in our time. In fact, we seek, and we, we seek, I'm sorry, and beseech that advice from others around us. And nowadays, with the complications of life, we do need 
someone to turn to. And, and, and believe me, uh, being myself, alhamdulillah, as a professor at the university for quite some time, and also being also an imam of a masjid, and being reached by so many people, I always get approached by people seeking the advice. They inquire about certain things in their own life. They need some, some advice. In fact, sometimes when someone feels uh, a pressure, when he or she feels certain doubts and inquiries and, and things on their mind they'd like to share with others, in fact, they turn to someone. And of course, I'm very happy to be that someone you turn to as your brother in Islam, as someone who is opening their arms for you and towards you. In fact, this program is open also to non-Muslims. If there is a non-Muslim around there, in the audience, anywhere in this world, we're so much happy to answer a question, to give an advice, to look around for uh, helping each other in this life, turning to the guidance of the Almighty in this world. Since we do face problems, concerns, things that we, we have in our minds, things that we are not sure of. And let's struggle together. Maybe I have an advice for you. I can seek it from professionals, but obviously, whether this advice is regarding spiritual matters, regarding your own worship matters of Allah the Almighty, or regarding any matter that you face in life, things in your social life, in surroundings, relationships with family members, friends, neighbors, people around you who uh, probably have some idea regarding, for example, uh, your own colleagues and peers at work, your own colleagues, who might have some idea of raise some issues. Of course, we welcome that. And of course, you can see the numbers appearing on the screen. If you'd like to share some idea with us, please do so, because at the end of Ta the end of the day, we need to get together as humans, as human beings, as Muslims who seek the advice of Allah. Look at what has been reported in the two authentic books of hadith of the Prophet wasallam. That is both the book of Imam al-Bukhari and the book of Imam Muslim by Jarir ibn Abdullah al-Bajali. May Allah be pleased with him who said, بَيَعْتُ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ عَلَىٰ إِقَامِ الصَّلَىٰ وَإِتَاءِ الزَّكَاةِ وَالنُّصْحِ لِكُلِّ مُسْلِمْ Look at this beautiful and great hadith. Jarir says, I made a covenant or an agreement with the Prophet, peace be upon him, when I extended a hand of support and belief in him. That is, I really want to follow him. And he asked me to do three things. To establish prayer or salah, to give the zakah or donation, or giving the alms to the poor and the needy and those who in need of it, and also to give advice to every Muslim. I think we all need advices. And one of the rights upon us, which again came in the book of Muslim, may Allah be pleased with him, which was reported by Abi Huraira, the companion, may Allah be pleased with him, who said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, may Allah, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, said, the right of a mu'min or a believer upon another believer or the other believers are six things. And he mentioned one of them, when he seeks advice from you, then 
You give him the advice. Do not hide the advice from your own brother or sister. I think we have someone on the line. You're the first caller. Please come and assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Shahir, are you there? Or Anne, yes. Yes. Anne from Egypt, salamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Oh, alaikum salam. Um, I have a question to take about uh, Tafsir in Surah al Imran. Yes. Ayah 55. And I'll just um, tell you in English it says that this is a, just, I mean, to like, get an idea, this is where um, uh, Jesus is. The Prophet Jesus was um, giving his message, and um, then Allah tells him, uh, he says, oh, Jesus, I will recall you and raise you up to me, and will pur- purify you of the company of those who disbelieve, and will set your followers above the unbelievers till the day of resurrection. Yes. And this is the part that I have a question about, that he will set your followers above the unbelievers until the day of resurrection. Because yes. I, I am aware that the followers of all the prophets are Muslim, and um, of course, I see that the Muslim, the state of the Ummah now, or the Muslim nations, um, is not above people that are not Muslim. And so, um, I was just wondering if you could comment on this. And yeah, yep. and just give me some, right. you know, idea. Of what what, what and and I would like to ask you yourself what do you think of this uh, yourself can you can you give me your own input on this yeah i mean i i think that like um my feeling is that allah you know has given his laws and his rules for mankind and that it doesn't matter um if you believe in him or it doesn't matter if um you're following these rules, you know, just to be a moral, ethical person, or if you're following them because you're a believer, you'll benefit in the, in the at least in the earthly life, if you follow his rules. Okay. And um, of course, if you're submitting yourself to him, you know, for, you know, as a to be dutiful to be a Muslim, if you're submitting yourself to him, then you'll also get the reward in the akhirah as well. Right. But if you follow his laws in the dunya, you'll be superior to those who don't. Okay. Um, that's what I understood from it. I mean, that's what I feel from it. It's almost like a law of physics. For example, gravity applies to everyone, whether they know it exists or whether they believe in it. You know, gravity still applies to you. So all these rules that Allah has sent applies. If you follow them, you will benefit. Okay. I don't know if I'm right on that. Okay. Well, thank you so much, uh, Sister Am. In fact, getting immediately into religious questions, I try to avoid... Anything that deals with giving answers to what is being termed as fatwa or a verdict regarding a particular issue. But since this is a a general question about the uh, status of Jesus, peace be upon him, on the day of judgment, when in fact he will meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as all the prophets will do, and they will be actually answering questions uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regarding their own dealings with their own nations as they were sent to particular nations. But of course, our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was sent to all nations after Jesus Christ when he was sent to all mankind, to both the jinn and the human beings. But then the idea of having the followers of Jesus, peace be upon him, as a prophet of Allah, superior to those who do not follow him. In fact, this superiority is in religion and and not necessarily in matters of the worldly affairs. Now, sometimes people feel that if you're a believer, you ought to be necessarily superior. But let me tell you that, yes, in fact, if you follow Allah's rules, and guidance, you'll surely attain a great status in this life as well as in the hereafter. But anyone who does so will go through difficult times and tribulations and tests and sometimes maybe uh, 
would be over uh, would be under the the rule of someone who's not. Look at, for example, uh, the time when uh, Pharaoh or the uh, uh, very famous Pharaoh, who was the king of Egypt and who claimed to be the lord of his own people at his own time, but yet his wife was a believer. And yet she was, of course, uh, under his own rule. In fact, she was dominated by his own superiority and by his own strength and power. So being a believer, you are, in fact, on top of others in your faith. But you'll go through difficult times, but the end, at the end of time, anyone who goes through this will attain superiority, provided that that person or nation or society would qualify and would go through some hard times. This is the nature of things. As you, we can see that throughout history, civilizations and in nations with big dominant power, for example, they don't all of a sudden jump to be superior and to be on top of things. It, it does it does take time, so that's why. Let me get this call, and if I have the time to go and, and explain more on that, because that is a very essential and, and great issue. Thank you. Thank you, Anne, for raising such a question. Uh, let me go to Rayhana from... Uh, KSA. Yes, Sister Rahana. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah khair for your program and we are very happy to see you on Huda TV. Um, we are all watching you since 20 years in Channel 2 and Peace TV and Huda TV. May Allah save you all scholars as assets for Muslims, inshallah. Mm. My too. question is uh, I wanted to know that we have done here Talim al Quran course, which is the Tafsir of Quran. Now I wanted to know further for Tarbiya, what we should, uh, we ladies should do not to forget about these uh, things and for our Tarbiya. And my second question is, uh, before uh, when we were uh, in India, we did not know that uh, uh, this particular night we pray whole night and they distribute some books regarding that you should pray 100 Nawafil on such particular night and so and so forth. So. Uh, this is a Dida we know now, but before we did not know and prayed uh, all this Salah, like 100 Raka and this all. So will it be accepted or be rejected in the sight of Allah? So I wanted to know it. Jazakallah khairan. Shukran. Assalamu alaikum wa alaikum wa salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you so much, Sister Rayhana, for raising good two questions. First, regarding the tafsir or interpretation of the glorious Quran, obviously. The glorious Quran is the source of guidance. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah, in the chapter of the cow, Alif Lam Mim, ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين. It is a guidance for those who have piety, for those who fear Allah and want to be close to Him and attain His, his pleasure. Now, Tafsir al-Quran, or the interpretation of the Quran, has to be done according to the correct methodology, and that is to be interpreted by the glorious Quran itself, by the sunnah of the Prophet, peace be upon him, by the uh, scholars who are well-versed into this matter. And of course, no one would have the authority to say anything regarding the glorious Qur'an, its interpretation, unless they have the knowledge. Otherwise, they would be held accountable because they might commit a mistake in this regard. And that's why one needs to, to, to refer to the authentic books and sources and scholars in regards to the interpretation of the glorious Qur'an, especially when it comes to modern times. Nowadays, we are having different circumstances different developments in the world and therefore one needs to bring that knowledge and understanding and have it reflected on what's going on 
in, in life. That's not an easy matter. And that's why we always need to refer to the, to the scholars. Allah says in the glorious Quran, فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Ask those who have knowledge among you, if you know not. And, and therefore, okay, let me, <laughs> I always get interpreted by, by these calls. Uh, let me get Sayyid, uh, Sayyid from KSA again. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu wa rahmatullah. Yes, yes Brother Sayyid. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. How are you? Alhamdulillah. Yes, Sheikh, I got your briefing in the beginning that I mean, uh, these question, uh, these, this uh, um, program specifically doesn't deal with questions for fatwas and others. So I have uh, sure. some very practical questions regarding our day to day life. That, okay. Uh, okay. You know, what happens that. Um, Alhamdulillah, in Ramadan or good um, uh, season of, uh, let's say, Ibadat and other come, we make too, too many commitments that I will do Tahajjur, I will do this and that. And uh, we do, let's suppose, for a while after Ramadan also. But once this period goes on, then at times it's difficult for many even to carry on with Fajr also. Mm. So I want to seek your uh, advice, I mean, um, if I got it right, that uh, if someone wants to curtail or control over his l laziness and, uh, I mean, uh, too much sleeping and other things, then what should he do? Okay. I think this is... Right, me. right. Thank you so much, Sayyid. Thank you. Let me go back to the question of Rayhana regarding the interpretation of the glorious Qur'an and also how to take the guidance of the glorious Qur'an into the tarbiyah or uh, discipline in upbringing ourselves because we need this tarbiyah as well. Don't think that we uh, as human beings because we are mature and old enough that we don't need uh, this discipline. In fact, everyone needs it. Whether you are a child, a young man or woman or uh, someone in their 40s or 50s or someone uh, older than that, we still need to discipline ourselves. We need to correct things that are um, uh, wrong or faulty in our lives. And we need again to go back and turn to the guidance of the glorious Quran and the guidance of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in order to make things uh, on the correct and right path. This is a struggle that we need always to strive ourselves to do. And of course, depending on the, your own circumstances, but you need to get the right advice and the right book, for example, and the right source, if you will, for dealing with the matter that you have at hand. That's why uh, if you're a group of women, for example, you need to go and turn to uh, a correct book of tafsir and try to understand it. And those who have knowledge, uh, obviously they need to turn to that. And, and, and you may increase your knowledge, uh, little by little. And of course, many women get together and they just only chat about uh, cooking, about uh, children, um, things that they buy and, and, and worldly affairs, but rarely they talk about serious matters. And of course, even with that, you still need to get some food for thought. You need to turn to the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. Read a book and you, you'd be amazed over a period of time, how much you accumulated of knowledge and how much you do have an understanding if you read a good authentic book that comes from an authentic source. Read, for example, the book of Tafsir by Ibn Kathir, uh, Rahimahullah, or by At-Tabari or someone of their caliber. Those authentic books that deal with the uh, Tafsir of the glorious Quran. And again, someone with uh, little knowledge can help in that, but at least if you have that understanding and if you seek to follow the right uh, steps in this regard, regard you'd, be, uh, you'd be amazed how much you, you would have gained uh, in that regard. Do I have a caller from Egypt? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Yes. Caller? Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you, Sheikh, for all you do. Thanks a lot. May Allah accept from you all good is deed. Barakallahu feek too. Sheikh, please, as you said, the deen al nasiha Yes. Religion is sincerity. So could you please tell us more about uh, the etiquette of giving advice? The etiquette of giving advice, mashallah. Yeah. And I have another question, please. Yes. I am sorry. I want, inshallah, to memorize the Holy Quran. 
So Masha could Allah. you tell us more about the best methodology of memorizing the Quran? MashaAllah. How much you memorize now? Uh, about 10, uh, ten juz. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. MashaAllah. Thank you, you so much. much. Barakallahu feek. Yes, brother. Well, let me go back and try to summarize things because as we go along, mashallah, we, we get uh, so many questions and, and, and inputs and inquiries seeking advice and let me uh, try to help in that regard. But when it comes to the matter of uh, praying 100 uh, rak'ahs, for example, per night, as you know, the Prophet ﷺ made it so clear when he said, Salatul Layli Mathna Mathna, the prayer of the night is in twos, in twos. So we don't need to go and, and uh, pray any particular prayer in order to gain uh, a certain uh, amount of, of ajr or reward. It's very open. So Alhamdulillah, you know, and, and by the way, the Prophet ﷺ never made more than 11 or 13 rak'ahs at any night of the year, whether this was in the month of Ramadan or at any other time. This is the hadith by Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, may Allah be pleased with her, who actually talked about the way the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam prayed at night. So, of course, we do need to uh, follow the sunnah and we'd be saved because if we exert effort in that regard, we'd have difficult times. Now, my director is saying we have to break. So please, we'll be back with you after this. Stay tuned. I heard it through a brother that you, oh my brother, you are going through times of difficulty. Intervacs, segments by segments, chapters by chapters, parts by parts. It took 23 years for the Quran to complete its revelation. You claim that the Qur'an is not the word of God, how could you convince me that there is only one version? Dr. Muhammad Salah will cover issues related to Muslim worship, creed, books, and much more. So stay tuned for Islam Unveiled. Why, righteous companions, it is Islam that given us the sense of dignity. I love all of them in a way that you cannot imagine. That Umar ibn Khattab an would say something and the Quran would come down matching what he said. وَالسَّابِقُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ مِنَ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنصَارِ وَالَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوهُمْ بِإِحْسَانِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ وَرَضُوا عَنْهُ Just compare, compare what you did for Islam with just one of them. Brother, you are going through times of difficulty. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. Now we are in the second part of our program tonight, Meet Your Advisor on Huda TV. And by the way, as I said, this is the first live broadcasting on Huda TV ever from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. We are so thankful for Huda administration, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen, for bringing this available and I have the honor to be with you and uh, without going into or without further delay in commenting on some of the questions let me get Shahinda from Egypt. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah Sheikh. Thank you so much for the beautiful program. Thank you so much sister. Um, I have a friend who lives in a non-Muslim country who sent me a question to give it to this caller so I was wondering if I can share it Sheikh. Please. Um, she says, I live in a non-Muslim country in the West where most of people are Christians. We have few Muslims here. I'm a converted Muslim, alhamdulillah, and after gaining knowledge, I started wearing proper hijab. Mm. When I first started to wear hijab, I faced hard times because people here would mock me, laugh at me, and insult me with very bad words. 
all of that made me develop a lot of problems like excessive shyness and many phobias. I was close to get into a depression. I didn't feel like going out anymore because every day I would hear something that would make me feel down. Many times I came back home crying. I was a prisoner in my own home. Besides of being a, in a Kufar country, it's also a very dangerous place. One of those days that I was returning home, some Nazi men in the street threatened to kill me and said even worse words and made me feel very embarrassed because he shouted out loud for people to listen to him humiliating me. After this day, I became very afraid, and even though I cover all my body except the face and the hands, I know I'm not doing it properly. I know it's not the right hijab. I use clothes that doesn't distinguish me as a Muslim anymore. I know I'm weak and wrong, but I just didn't have other options. Can I be dressed this way until I make planning hijra fi sabilillah since my life is in risk? What advice would you give me? MashaAllah. That's the end of her question, Sheikh. Thank you so much. Thank you, Shah Shahinda, for, in fact, sharing with us this uh, very uh, disheartening story. Thanks. And I have another caller from UAE. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Yes, sir. Sheikh, how are you? Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen Ahmed. Uh, Sheikh, I'm sorry, I have a question. Uh, uh, I have my wife, uh, she's from Asian, Asian country, okay? And uh, she have auntie, they have that kind of business. Like her auntie will borrow money from her, but she will give back as a rice. But she will, give, she will give back more, more than she she borrow. Is it haram like that or no? Okay, you're asking me um, uh, sort of a like factor question. I'd like to avoid that, but uh, I'll, I don't mind giving you some, some advice regarding that particular issue, okay? Yes, Ahmed. Thanks a lot. Let me go back to the question of uh, Sayyid regarding Ramadan and, and how a person feels so strong in their belief, but after some time they're not committed anymore or they become so weak. Well, that's why such occasions were given to us as mercy in kindness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, Ramadan, Hajj, the prayer itself, and Umrah, and Hajj, and so on, were given to us so can, we can help each other, uh, we can help ourselves and be with the Muslim community and feel stronger in our Iman. That's why the Prophet ﷺ says, Al Jumu'atu ila al Jumu'ah, wa Ramadanu ila Ramadan, wal Umratu ila al Umrah, kaffaratu lima baynahunna, idha jtunibat al kabair. So, from Friday to Friday, because we go to Masjid on Friday to give the advice of the Khatib and to be reminded and to see the strength of Muslims when we go to Masjid together with the rest of the community, that makes us uh, better Muslims. But then throughout the week, we get uh, weak, weak by indulging in certain things in our life. And then we pick up again uh, on, on Friday. Again, the same thing for Ramadan. We get better on Ramadan, but then after Ramadan we get weaker. This is the nature of things, and that's why these things were given to us in order to recharge our Imanic battery, if you will. It helps us. But then there are certain things that we need to avoid. Of course, we need to turn to Allah for dua. We need to keep the prayer in the masjid as males, for example. We need to turn to the, to the glorious Qur'an to refresh our iman. We need to indulge in remembrance or dhikr. We need to be around those who are good Muslims around us in order to help us stay as Muslims. And that is very helpful. And again, Umrah, if you feel very weak, go and make Umrah if you can. Go to Hajj as much as you can because that recharges your Iman. Again, give Sadaqah, indulge in anything that is good. Uh, make Al Amru Bil Maruf and Nahi Al Munkar, giving advice to Muslims, enjoying what is right, forbid what is evil. All of these things are very important because they refresh us as human beings and we need that. We need it. It's very, very important. Um, from Egypt, uh, the, the idea of. Uh, 
uh, etiquettes of, of advice. Thank you for the question because I wanted to go into that earlier because there are certain etiquettes we need to, to follow when we give the advice. First, we need to be sincere in that because anything that is not made purely for Allah's sake would not count and would not be helpful. And that's why we always need to have that ikhlas or sincerity for us Allah, for Allah's sake. And we need to have advice based on knowledge. If we don't have the knowledge, then we should not really give the advice in that regard. This is very important. That's why it's also important for us if we advise someone in particular. In, in general, we need to, uh, obviously, we need to uh, make it in private. If that is about a certain issue that we don't want to share with others. However, for general issues like we're doing here, we can share it with a larger number of people in order for us to help one another and try to be good Muslims in that regard. Yusuf, Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullah. Yusuf? Yeah. Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullah. Yes, brother Yusuf. Go I ahead, what do you have? Question, huh? Yes, this is a uh, meteor advisor. And any yeah, yeah. anything you'd like to share with us, go ahead. Yeah. Hello? Yeah, I'm hearing you. Yeah, the problem is here, um, uh, one of our uh, friends has become converted to Islam. Yes. So here, uh, uh, his, his friend, he's taking his friends to Makkah mm -hmm. for Umrah. Is he a Muslim, he said? Just yeah, just he already converted to Muslim. He already became yeah. a Muslim, alhamdulillah. So, so what is the question? If, uh, if, one, if uh, one or two times... Uh, please, please speak, speak to me from the phone. Don't listen to TV, okay? Yeah, yeah. If a if a if a person uh, if a person uh, uh, have a shahada la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, mm -hmm. then uh, can we take him to Makkah for Umrah? Okay, okay. Is it my question? Because uh, his the his, one, uh, his, his both friends are not praying well. Okay, okay. Very good. Good question. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Yusuf. Yeah. I'll answer that question, inshallah. Yes, Khalil from. Yes, Khalil, Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullah. You're from the USA, Sorry, right? To that. Yes, I'm from America, yes. Yes, go ahead, brother. Uh, I would like to ask, how do I advise uh, people who are older than me? What is, uh, what is your advice? Okay. Is there, a special, is there a certain etiquette for that? Yes, indeed. Okay, thank very, you. Very good. Thank you so much, Khalil. Well... Let me go back to the matter of the etiquette, since I, I'm going to include that question of Khalil uh, regarding the etiquettes of the of the advice, because we said you have to be sincere and you have to have knowledge and you have to to, to really um, care about the circumstances of the person. One of these things that you need to consider is the age and status of that person. Giving an advice, for example, to your boss is not like giving the advice to your own brother or to someone. Um, to young man, for example, in the street when you are older than him. So you consider age, you consider status and nobility, for example, if someone is, is in a higher place or someone with a, with a power. Uh, of course, you need to, to be more considerate of the way you talk to them. Don't talk to someone who is older than you as you're giving them the advice and, and they feel like you are you know, giving yourself more uh, higher status than you are. But you need to come to them and say, for example, when Ibrahim alayhi salam gave the advice to his father, remember in the glorious Quran he said, Ya abati la ta'abud shaitan. Oh my father, do not worship shaitan. Ya abati inni qad ja'ani min al-ilmi ma lam ya'tika fattabi'ni ahdika siratan sawiyya. Oh my father, I have been given some knowledge. Uh, which you don't have, so follow me in that. And he always says in the beginning, Ya Abati, Ya Abati, Oh my father, Oh my father. This is important because you need to bring that person closer to your heart. 
And we always know when you meet someone, before, before you go into the advice, you go and establish what they call in sociology, rapport. Establish some good connection with that person. That will make advice better and, and listened to by the um, other party. I have... Yes, I have a caller from UAE. Assalamu alaikum. Ahmed, yes? Can we play? Walaikum Islam. Walaikum Islam. Go ahead. What's your name? Can we play um, Karams and Snooker in Islam? Can we play what? Karams and Karams and Snooker in Islam. I'm sorry, I could not understand this. I'm sorry, huh? maybe, maybe, I, I did not understand the question. Snooker, billiards, billiards. Billiards. Uh, hello, assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Yes, alaikum as can, can, can we play billiards? Can we play uh, Karen's and Snooker in Islam? Karen's and Smoker? What is, what is a Karen's and Smoker? Can you snooker, snooker. 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 Caroms. The playing game. Oh, snooker. I see. Caroms. Snooker. Okay. All right. Thank you for the question. Okay. And as as I told you, I need to to avoid getting into uh, these uh, religious fatwa questions because our idea generally here is to share some advices. Maybe if something on your mind, just like the story we heard about the sister um, in this non-Muslim country. This is why I, I'm, I'm coming to that. But uh, the question of memorizing the glorious Qur'an, what would be the best advice for memorizing the glorious Qur'an? Well, the best advice is that you need to have sincerity. You have to have a strong uh, determination to do it. Ask Allah for making dua. And also... Assign a particular time and say, I have that committed time. For example, the best thing is to do it before you go to bed or if you feel tired, go in when you're fresh in the morning. That's probably the best thing is to do it after Fajr if you're an early sleeper because that will, you know, the best thing to do is, is to start with the glorious Quran. This will add more barakah or blessings to your, to your day. And it also is very good. And take it in small chunks. Because some people get so enthusiastic in the beginning, and they say, I'm going to memorize the Surah Al-Baqarah, for example, in a whole week. And I can do it. 50 pages. You know, every day I'm going to memorize four or five pages. Well, slow it down. Take it in small chunks, because you need to connect the verses all together. And it does take time. And my, my advice to you is to take it like, uh, with a with a, a sheikh or a muqri or someone who is a professional teacher of the glorious Quran, that would help so much. Or with a friend, and that would would help so much. Yes, Ibrahim from Egypt. Salamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Yes, thank you, sheikh, for this useful program. Barakallahu feekum. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, thank you, sheikh. Uh, I think this topic is an important topic. Uh, because uh, the advice or consultation has a high status in Islam. Yes. Uh, this is very clear in the actions and deeds of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. Uh, so my question, my question is, uh, the people who usually insult me, do they deserve the advice, or the advice is for only the, the other people like uh, my relatives, friends, and other people who deal with me in a friendly way? Thank you so much. Insult, you said, Ibrahim? Yes, yes. Insult, well, okay. Insult, yes. Yes, inshallah. Yes. I'll answer that question. Thank, Thank you, so, you much. so much. All right. Thank you. Enough. Okay, we have Ahmed again from UAE. Yes, Ahmed, salamu alaikum. Ahmed? Yeah, salamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Is it the same family? Salamu alaikum, Sheikh. Is it the same family that you just called earlier? No, no, no. I'm different. I'm Dif different. Different one. Where are you calling from? I'm from Dubai also. My Dubai. I'm a Sheikh Ahmed. MashaAllah. Yes, go ahead, brother. Okay. I have a, a small question. Yes. I, as a father, can use uh, my daughter's funds or I mean, my, can money in cash to perform Umrah? 
Can you take? My, can I use my daughter's fund? I mean, she's working. Can right. I use her money to perform Umrah? And, and is, does she agree to do that? I mean, uh, uh, does, she does, has to agree. Does she have any problem with that? No, she doesn't have any problem. Okay. All right. Then go ahead and do it. No. If she doesn't mind, go yeah. ahead and do it as a loan, right? As a loan. You'll, you'll have to pay it back. Okay. Yes, no problem, inshallah. Thank you so much, Ahmed. Let me go back to the issue of Shahinda and the, the matter of when someone lives in a non-Muslim country. I know that anyone who lives in a Muslim or non-Muslim country would still face some challenges. I know it may be difficult, especially if people don't understand you. If people are different than you are, and you are in a situation like this, and you're facing difficulties wearing the hijab, and facing these difficulties, obviously it does create a lot of challenges for you. That's why we say, uh, first turn to Allah, you need to be around some Muslim community around you. I know it would be so difficult, and especially for women, I know the struggle is greater for a woman who strives to be a strong Muslim. Now, if you can do it, if you can cover, fine, alhamdulillah, if you still cannot cover, according to some scholars in, in Islam, that would be, of course, permissible, provided that you do not have any makeup. Because adding a makeup to the face, for example, or to the eye, um, eyelids or eyebrows and, and all that, is, is not allowed in Islam, as you know, because the idea of hijab, after all, is to hide the beauty and not to deceit, to, to uh, still lewd the person uh, away and, and try to create some attraction and turn that to per person that might lead to committing uh, wrongdoing or establishing a relationship between a man and a woman. That's basically the reason for hijab. It's, it's a deterrent to keep everyone away. But if under certain circumstances, you try to avoid that, but uh, under circumstances, if you're feeling so much pressure from the uh, uh, people around you, but even even though, let me let me tell you that sometimes you might get into some discussion with non-Muslim women, especially about this issue, and they would ask you questions regarding why you're doing this, and so on, that would involve you into a discussion that hopefully will lead these people to understand why you're doing that. And to, to even to Muslims who are very lenient in, in this regard to be committed and to understand that Alhamdulillah hijab is something that we need to observe because that's part of our protection, part of our duty towards uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It does help us to concentrate on things more important in life than just only spending so much money on how we look and so on. I mean, if I go and, and talk about how much money is being spent on uh, ornaments and, and, and beauty and, and cosmetics and perfume and so on, it would, it would be in billions for women. And I know someone was telling me about a woman who works in an office in, a, in, in some non-Muslim country, and he says that woman spends more than her salary on the clothing and cosmetics and, and all in, in order to look, you know, so beautiful and young and so on. That, that is really uh, interesting. I mean, what is the benefit after all of her work? She's not gaining anything and she's still asking her husband or the family at home to support her because she's spending so much on that. In order to avoid that, because the value of a human being is in their own heart, in their own character, in their own thinking, in their own contribution to the society, not in the way they look. Yes, we need to look nice, we need to look moderate, we need to look um, accepted by people, but not at the expense of really our personality as human beings, our minds. Because some people just only look at women. I know this is a very critical issue because I know some people would say, why are you curtailing 
the freedom of women. Why are you doing this to women? We're not doing this. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, since He created man and women being attractive to each other, and particularly women are subject of all this because Allah gave them beauty, Allah gives them this this nice and, and, and beautiful looking uh, or look, obvi- obviously they attract men more than men would attract them. But they still, I know, they might be led into that kind of uh, uh, exchangeable or, or uh, the same same attraction from, from the opposite gender. But the idea, again, is to follow Allah's directions in that because He has a final wisdom in this regard. And, and then, obviously, if we, la- if we follow that, we will help our society to be more safer, more safer, more happier in life than to be involved in certain things of, um, of only concentrating on the way we look. And, and yes, that might be a test for you. I know that uh, may give you some, some terrible um, feelings, uh, depression, but turn to Allah. Uh, may Allah help you. Turn to Allah for, for guidance, turn to Allah for dua, uh, help, uh, uh, get, get the help of other Muslim women. That would, that would help so much in that regard. Yes, sister from Nigeria, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Sister, we lost, we lost you. I know, I know it's difficult to make phone calls from certain countries. I know Nigeria being one of those countries, difficult to do that, but may Allah be with you. Uh, uh, Ahmed, regarding uh, the way if, if you deal with someone, uh, if you borrow money and give them rice instead, uh, I don't know if, if, they, if they would agree. Normally, if you give them, um, if you borrow money, you're, you're supposed to return the same amount of money, but without any addition, because that becomes then riba. Basically, give them the same value of what you, what you do. And, and instead of that, what, what you need to do is, in order to avoid this problem, go ahead and sell your own rice in the market, get the money from there, and then return the same amount of money. And they, we call this as al-qardul hasan. This is good loan, um, no, uh, no addition, no deletion from that. But that is a help from uh, a Muslim brother, so his Muslim brother, uh, a help from a Muslim sister to her own Muslim sister. That would uh, straighten things up rather than to be involved in, in, in different uh, things and, and they may not be happy and so on. And so forth. Um, Yusuf, um, can can you uh, take someone who just became a Muslim to Umrah? Yes, you can. You can do that. However, the point is, if they un- if they if they understand Islam, then yes, go ahead and and give them, mashallah, uh, some in- education about the importance of Tawheed and the importance of Salah. Teach them how to how to do. Salah very well. That could be, by the way, an opportunity if you take them along to Mecca is to teach them not only Umrah, but to teach them Salah as well. You know, take that advantage. Don't say, we'll wait until you perfect Salah. During that process, during that, you know, Umrah journey, do it and they would learn both Umrah and Salah at the same time. Khalil, I already answered your question. Ahmed regarding billiards. I don't see any problem with billiards or snookers as long as there is no um, uh, no money involved in that um, from the, the two sides that if I win I give you this there is no need for that as long as, as this is going to not to turn you away from doing a worship or a duty and there is no money involved and there is nothing wrong with that you know sometimes we need some time off and we need to exercise some of these sports but don't be don't make it your own aim and um, goal in life is just only to play and play and play. Make it as a time off from time to time when you get um, when you need some 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 time off. Why not? I mean that would that would help you uh, energize yourself and and even refresh your mind and relax and so on. Um, Ibrahim uh, regarding. The insult, thank you for, for what you said regarding advice. And of course, even when you 
when you get an insult some, from someone, go ahead and, and be, be nice to them and try to avoid. I mean, don't get into, into an argument because the best advice in this regard is to try to control yourself. That is the best because sometimes we get, get it, given advice not only with uh, some words, but even by actions. That would be, that would be important in this regard. And um, uh, all of that, uh, I, I, think, I think it is important for us to be together, inshallah, in this, in this way. Uh, they told me uh, time is, is up for, for today. But inshallah, we will meet next Friday, by the grace of Allah, at the same time, 9 p.m. Mecca time, 6 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time. Until I see you at that time, I wish you all the best. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect you, keep you on the straight path, help you in your endeavor, and make you happy and having taqwa and piety of Him. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I heard it through a brother that you, oh my brother, you are going through times of difficulty. I know sometimes you feel all alone. Call me anytime when you feel all the way down. Oh, 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 oh. Trials and temptations lie at every corner we turn. It's a test from Allah to see if we succeed or not. My brother, it's a trial that oh, you're going through. So oh, don't be afraid. Allah's there for you. So hold on, Allah's there for you, hold on, He's listening to you, hold on.